There's some disgusting food you can see on the Antero Bang under uh, Art Gone Bad. This is a photo exhibit uh, done by an Austrian photographer, Klaus Pitchler. It's called One Third, and it's supposed to play off of the fact that one third of the world's food goes to waste. That's according to the United Nations. So he has just taken some photos of some rotting food and uh, put them out there on his website. And uh, you see the moldy strawberries and the rotten carrots and the maggots all through the flour and everything. I find the decay photos just absolutely fascinating. There's something about just watching something fall apart like that, that just as it breaks down into and becomes actually a whole different creature, that I, I find just amazing. I think it has to do with my death fixation, where it's like, all right, that's, that's what's going to happen to our bodies after we go, where it's just, it's just a matter of time. Before all of a sudden, there's the maggots, there's the mildew, and everything else. I, it, it's very intriguing to me. And uh, I remember as a little kid, I, my dad would take me out to my grandfather's grave uh, for different holidays and stuff. I was the only one that would go with him. And I used to get in trouble for asking, what would he look like right now if we could open that grave? And then I would get told, don't talk like that. Especially in a cemetery. So I, I, so it's I have a like a fixation with that. It's because you're so mentally healthy. Yeah, it's it's the death obsession. Probably the same reason I keep my toenails around in a what? baggie. Anything not prepped? Uh. No, that was it. I know, like, right now I have uh, actually, like, a couple of dishes in the refrigerator that is, uh, probably should be thrown out by now, but I'm just kind of seeing what exactly happens and how fast it happens. It's like a weird little, like, science experiment. Then what's the science? Well, I guess it's... Uh, how quickly mold comes around and what it looks like. Hmm. How it could be just like a dark green spot or just get really furry or something like that. And how so how quickly that spot spreads. And that was all I had. So those photos are on the Interrobang now, if you'd like to see some really rotten food. I don't think it even looks that rotten, because he's just using vegetables. Yeah, what, there's one piece of me here? Yeah. What's really fucked up is maggots can come out of flour. Bacteria mm -hmm. is fucked up. Oh well, no, the fucking flies lay eggs in it. Oh. It doesn't come from flour. Oh. Wondering that. Ancient man believed the same thing as you. Just consider me Encino man. And that was all I had. What does that mean? I pick it up now? When you make mm -hmm. that statement? Yeah, or, or um, there's also the uh, stretched uh, Achilles piercing that's on the IB wire. So it wasn't all you had. Oh, no. Which is probably the most painful piercing, uh, looking piercing, that I've seen. I wouldn't think that you'd be able to walk once you've had your Achilles tendon opened up like that. No, this is what they do. Oh, That looks like it was just a hole drilled in his body, not like a fucking piercing. Cool happy face tattoo, though, on his fucking ankle. 
Uh, Dan, you're on running Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, Fezzy, whatever you do, man, when you're out trying uh, prospects for dates and looking for conversation, uh, don't bring up the molded pie in your fridge and don't talk about your fucking toenails. Uh, Thomas, you're on the Run Fez show. Fezzy, when you let stuff sit around and get moldy like that, you can breathe in the spores and get sick, so don't do that. Oh, I see, because I, I try to keep everything covered and then just go back and look at it later on. You're a healthy guy. Yeah, just not um, emotionally, I guess. Or mentally. And that's all I got. So they said with this Achilles piercing that you could actually get crippled from even trying it. No shit. <laughs> Can't fucking do it. <sighs> Why Why would you want to fucking hold through your Achilles tendon when you know you can slit an Achilles tendon and a per person can't walk anymore? All right. I like fucking drink and fuck myself up a lot, but this is this has to be in the same place of, like, hating yourself yeah. or something, right? I mean, yeah. for this is fucking, you're crippling, you could cripple yourself. It's literally somebody who can't think of anything to say to be interesting, so they got to do something that's stupid. And that's all I got. Well, it's got to be bad if even piercers are like, don't do this. True. And this looks more painful than any sort of Prince Albert piercing. Anything going through the head of the dick or yeah, the wanna, balls. I'd rather... Uh, <laughs> it's, like you, it's like when you hear a child say something like that. I'll, uh, seriously, I'd rather have my legs cut than put anything through my dick or balls. Forget it. Oh. Cut right through my legs. Oh, my dick. Oh, my dick. <laughs> Shove needles into your cockhead. No thanks. They show this guy standing up, but I wonder if that's just if those legs are even working at that point. Because those piercings look really, really fresh. Just pretty much all infected all around it. And that was all I had. Yeah, I don't have anything either. And also on the Interrobang, um, the uh, Ziggy Marley interview is up. Really, really cool interview with Ziggy Marley. Great stuff about his dad and, of course, the, the documentary Bob Marley. That's coming out this Friday. Kurt. Hey guys, I just called to say, uh, well, uh, uh, a great show, and uh, uh, that's all I got. That's the out cue that you can have when you don't want to work anymore. You just say, "This, that's all I got." Because you know how I say that on a daily basis. Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. Then I go into a live read. I do a long piece of dead air and then I go into a live read. Ron and Fesho. Hi, this is Ron. How are you? Uh, 
Okay. Brian, you're on the Ron and Fez show. All right, look, Fezzy, you were the old Fez. You came out of the closet. I'm gay. Everyone fucking, you know, we're happy. Then you were like cool new Fez for like, what, fucking two days? And then you're back to the old Fez again. What's going on, bro? Let Talk me through it. If you won't talk to Ron, talk to me. How can I help you out here? What's going on, buddy? It's, uh, nothing. It's just... um. Show. Damn right. A lot of dead air today and just the old Fez locking up. What's going on, man? Just uh, just some anxiety. Um, thank you, though. Bill, you're on my Fez. Hey, uh, yeah, I just wanted to do a live read for everybody. Craig, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, what's going on, buddies? I just called into work and told them that's all I got, and I got fired. I don't know what happened. Some interesting uh, footage on the uh, Ivy Wire of River Phoenix from, uh, of course, years and years ago. This is back uh, on the Donahue show. And this is just called Early Signs That River Phoenix Was Headed for Trouble. And if, and you see uh, Donahue taking a caller there and... Uh, just River Phoenix, basically uh, out of it, his head back, and his eyes rolling around. Well, there's no reason to play it, because he's not talking. So I don't know whether he just uh, couldn't stand that caller, or if this was uh, yeah, chemically induced. Where'd you find that at? On the uh, on the Ivy Wire. I mean, where did this story come from originally? Um, I'll check on that. Uh, Rob, you're on run of Fez. Yeah, Fez, two questions. One, you don't like music, so why didn't you give Dave your ticket to Springsteen? And have you ever talked to your shrink about why your childhood ruled your, ruled your adult life? I don't know if it rules it. It's just that there's things that you know what I I th- I thought I thought as a child that there's still that still um, intrigued me. I guess like the like the rotting food. So, I don't know if it's so much hanging on to it is still just interested in it. Because you can just watch that stuff and just every day just get get a little peek at it and see if there's any changes. It looks like, all right, it's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden there's just that little spot there. And then it continues to spread from that spot outwardly. And like the uh, the watermelon photo where it just looks like the whole thing is collapsing in on itself. Hey, Drew. Hey, guys. Uh, I do some pro bono public defender work here in uh, Louisiana, and I went into court this morning with a murder suspect, and I said, Judge, jury, this guy is not guilty. That's all I got. Probably didn't work out too well there. So I'm so I'm sorry. I'm just not sure what to say. And I 
apologize. Tim, you're on my face. Yeah, I was molesting a little kid and I blew my load all over his face. And he, I said, that's all I got. Now the little faggot went and told my mo his mother. Luke, you're on the Run Fest show. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I have a theory why Fez likes those photos so much. Um, I think it's because he was saying that he likes seeing things fall apart, right, Fez? Well, yeah, I was very interested in the decay and how that happens, how it how it breaks down like that. Well, and how it turns into another organism, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And how there's one little spot that starts. And then it just spreads and spreads and spreads until it consumes the whole thing, and it's that other organism. Right, yeah. Well, I think the reason you like that is because, well, Ron said this before, you only like things that model you. And that's kind of like you, Fez. You fall apart, and you turn into something else, and we just watch it happen right in front of us. Right? Yeah, I, I see the analogy there, yes. But in another way, you know, you you started playing a gay character, and then eventually you realized you were gay, so there was that little spot, and then it spread and spread and spread, and it consumed you. I don't, I'm not sure if you're gay, Fez. I think you need to get out there. Oh, I, I'm, you, t I'm totally gay. I just haven't gotten out there yet. Well... But then there was, you know, when you were looking at the bearded ladies, and you you thought they were really attractive, but they were ladies. They just had hair, which sort of models you too. Well, basically, what it, with the bearded lady uh, thing, it, it looked like some of those ladies would actually make good-looking men if they were guys. Katy Perry would probably make a really good-looking gentleman. And the beard brought out her eyes. Tom, you're on the run of Fez show. Benny, you made your point. Please come back. We understand. You're pissed off. Um, this point has been made so many times. I don't know how many more times you need to make it, but just come back on the show, please. We need you. Bye. Uh, hey, Steve. Steve, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I had a question since your show is kind of doing whatever right now. Have you ever seen those movies? I guess where the uh, zeitgeist addendum? No. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. You've never seen them? No. Yeah, they're pretty interesting. I try to get a lot of people to see them. That Zeitgeist addendum kind of goes into the uh, money creation and money distribution in the United States. A lot of other things, too. I just found it pretty interesting. And uh, I want to say hey to Casey on Truck 8339 and Pepper Your Centaur. Uh, let's go over here to Tony Cleveland. Mr. Man. Hey, how's it going today, guys? Uh, I'm just driving down a turnpike. I call you know, quite often. I got a 9,000 gallon tanker of Propane, I think I'm just going to, uh, that's all I got. Joe, you're on the Run Fest show. Yeah, we had uh, three years of locked up street Fez. I want to know what's one thing Fez is going to do to prevent three years of locked up gay Fez. Anything. Well, eventually I'm going to meet somebody. Uh, on the air, Fez? I don't know where I'll meet him, but... Uh, but he was asking and, about was your job, not your personal life, your job, your fucking occupation. Like most times of people's jobs, you can't say to them, hey, what's going on, and then hear stuff about their at-home life. Right, yeah. yeah. Like people normally will just go, I don't give a fuck what's going on at home, I just want to see how you work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was acting about your asking about your occupation. Yeah, uh just uh 
to get more experiences and then bring them onto the radio show. So I'll just come in here and talk about your experiences on your get with your gay life. That's your job as an entertainer. Uh, no other thing, and uh, just to find some more things that I connect with. Unfortunately, today all it was was rotten food. Ezra, you're on running Fez. Ron, hey, I lost my power to end. You assume it's about 1 o'clock, quarter after 1, somewhere in there? Hmm. Joe, you're on running Fez. Hey, Ronnie B. Hey, Fezzy. Yeah. I just want to say thank you, buddy, for bringing back Good Air Day. I appreciate it. That's that's all I got. Why don't we take a break here? Sure. That's all I got. Run fast.